says it's time for Black Buffalo. The boys and girls are waiting in the longhouse. Marge is here with April the Coyote, and we're ready to go. And all you boys and girls there at home are waiting, too. Hey, we've got a program planned for you today. We've got great Bible stories coming up. The boys and girls here are going to be singing for us. We're going to see what Coyote has to do for us, April has to do for us today. And let's see, a lot of other goodies coming up for you. You'll want to be in on it. Be sure, have your pencil and paper ready to take down our address so you can write to me if you haven't done that yet because I want to send you all the free stuff. So a lot of things happening today right here on the Powell in the next few minutes. Right now, why don't you call mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or somebody and ask them to bring you a pencil and paper so you can take the address down. In the meantime, we're going to get going on with the powwow. And that's right. And coming right up, Black Bubble's going to talk to somebody over here very important. And see where I'm going to give you my drum. Okay. Let's see. I'll move over here and talk to the teacher. Uh -huh. Could you tell us your name, please? I'm Judy Smith. And Judy, uh, you teach the fourth grade at Peoria Christian School, is yes, that right? Yes, I do. Judy, I think before we even say anything else, I, I could ask you who the favorite students are in school, and you'd say fourth grade, and if I asked them who the <laughs> best teacher was, they'd say Judy Smith. I know that I right away. So. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm not even going to ask that. And we have a mother over here. What's your name? Barb Platner. And Barb, you have children in the school? Yes, I have a fourth grader named Blake. And uh, do you have any others? Jared Platner in fifth grade. Fifth grade, that's right. I knew there was another one there <laughs> somewhere. So, okay, well, we're going to hear the children sing. What are they going to sing for us? Well, they've chosen. He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, why don't you come on out and lead it? And uh, the boys and girls can sing right along there at home. Go ahead, I'll let you move right on over there. And the boys and girls at home will sing along with you, okay? So let's, uh, why don't you move right over in here, okay? Yeah, right in there. That way we can get all their faces real good. Okay, let's sing them happy out there. Go ahead. Black buffalo in his hands. Okay, Marge, I wonder if, you know, you just stay right there and I'm going to get down over here on this side where we can still keep April close for the boys and girls. And uh, Marge, uh, we want to, let's see, let's talk about Wildlife Prairie for just a minute. Where's li Wildlife Prairie? Wildlife located? Prairie Park is 10 miles west of Peoria, right off of I-74. Uh, we have animals there that are native to Illinois that you can come and enjoy. Uh, some of them you don't see in Illinois anymore, like the buffalo. Is it open? Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, uh, but not this buffalo. Not this about, buffalo. Uh, you've got a big herd of buffalo out Real there. Real animal buffaloes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, is it open year round? Yes, it is. We have shorter hours in the winter. Uh, we have 11,000 school kids coming there in the month of May for their field trips. Just in May? Just in the month of May. They so come other times of the year, too? They can come all summer long and through the fall. Now, uh, how long have you been with Wildlife Prairie? I've been there since the park opened in 1979. So, so you've been I've there several years there now. Quite That's a few right. years, and, and I've enjoyed it. Okay, well, <laughs> let's talk about April. April is down here laying on the cowhide. Well, as you can tell, she's... Getting quite elderly right. now. Her mother was a coyote, her father probably a dog, and she could have been a wild animal, only um, a 
person got a gun and killed her mother and all her brothers and sisters for no reason they weren't doing any harm. She scampered away and was picked up by a neighbor out of the soybean fields. And uh, so she's alive and can be here with us today. And how many years have you had April? I've been with April every day for 11 years. Animals become family just like people. So if you take an animal as part of your home, you need to make a commitment to be mm -hmm. there for that animal for as long as it lives. So Any kind of an animal for a pet. They, isn't right. That true? We have dogs and cats and fish and rabbits for our pets. The wild animals we should leave alone and not make pets out of them. Now, uh, April, in the past, some of the boys and girls will remember who've watched the program. She used to sing on the program. She didn't this time. She didn't. Um, she's been on stage for 11 years, and she has earned her retirement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I should tell you this, that wild coyotes only live about eight years, so mm -hmm. she's already four years beyond the normal lifespan of a wild coyote. So she's doing very well. And uh, So when a coyote is that age that she is, uh, how old would that be in compared to, say, human age? That would be um, 12 times 7. It's. Uh, Can someone tell me how old that is over there? Come on. 12 times 7, what? Well, how about that? Good, yep. Uh -huh. So she would be a very elderly Ooh. grandmother. <laughs> yes, all right. Okay, well, Marge, I'm going to let you sit there just for a moment, and, and uh, let's see if the boys and girls have some questions. Do any of you have a question you'd like to ask uh, April about the, uh, about, uh, well, ask Marge about April or any other wild animals that you might think about? Any of you got a question you'd like to come up with, huh? Sometimes the children wonder what she Whoops, eats. What's that? Sometimes the children wonder what she eats. Okay, can you help and us with uh, that? Because she it eats dog food, and I cook chicken and beef for her, and I put the broth and a little bit of the meat over the dog food. So she loves that. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay, I got another question back here. I'm gonna get back here and find out what it is. Okay. Does she? Where does she live? Like in the house or like out in the shed or something? Okay, that question was where does she live in the house or out in the shed or something? She lives in the garage and there's a doggy door that goes out into her kennel. Nice big run so she can come in for shelter. Mostly she likes to be outside in the straw. And nowadays that's where I let her stay. She used to come to work with me every day but she wants to just be home in her own place so that's where I live her. Leave, leave her most. Right now, she kind of likes that cowhide. <laughs> Somebody else have a question here. Okay, here's another question. Um, where was she born? Like, what city? Oh, now, wait a minute. That was, where was she born? She was born um, near Mason City, Illinois, about 50 miles south of here. And a kind farm lady picked her up from the soybean fields and fed her with a baby bottle. And after she'd finished her milk, she wanted to play. And she grabbed the nipple and growled and snarled and backed <laughs> off. And, and she chewed up quite a few baby bottles before she was on to solid food. <laughs> All right, another question. Somebody else have a hand up. All right, down here, what's your question? Um, does she eat out of a dog bowl? Does she eat out of a dog bowl or right off the ground or what? No, she eats out of a dog bowl. And it's a very clean pan. It's washed and sterilized every day. And uh, she's a very tidy eater. Uh, she doesn't eat anywhere except at home, with one exception. Sometimes when she's been working very, very hard, we stop at McDonald's and she gets a cheeseburger. <laughs> How about that? Any more questions? Of April? Oh, yeah, so we got lots of questions over here. What's your question, sir? Um, do they, she, does she like to run around a lot and play? Okay, does she like to run around a lot and yes, play? Yes, she loves to run around and play. And her play companion is a big golden retriever dog, twice as big as she is, and it's a boy dog. She beats up on him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question. Here's one over here. What's your question? How often um, do you wash the dog? How often do you give the dog a bath mm -hmm. or wash the dog? I rub her with a towel when she's been out in the rain, and I comb her. Right now she's shedding her winter fur, so she looks a little bit shaggy, but uh, otherwise I just comb her and she washes herself. She's very, very clean. And if she should get her paws muddy, the next morning they're all cleaned up. 
Okay, we have a question back here from this young man. Um, do, it, did you have to tame her when you got her? And did you have to tame her when you got her, okay? Um, I didn't tame her. She just is the way she is. I treated her kindly and gently. I didn't try to obedience train train her. It wouldn't you couldn't do that. I just let her know I was her friend and I was there for her. And that way we've gotten along very well. She's never, never bitten me or anybody else. Okay, we have one more question. And what's your question? How often does she eat? Well, how often does she eat? Those are all interesting, it's good very questions. Very good questions. She eats only once a day, uh, and once in a while she gets a special treat, like a bone to chew on or a special sandwich <laughs> from McDonald's. <laughs> 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 Basically just once a day, but she has a good, big, clean bucket of water there all the time. Marge, I want to thank you for bringing April with us today, and uh, we know that you take care of many other animals out there, and we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about that in another program. But right now, we want to thank you for bringing April, and we have Singing Waters. Could you come over and tell us what we got coming up next, huh? What yes, we Black up? Buffalo, we've got great Bible stories. And, you know, Marge talked about being a friend to April, and many of you boys and girls have lots of friends, and sometimes you even do something special for a friend, don't you? And it's like you kind of take care of them if somebody's fallen and got hurt, and you would help take them, take them home so they could be taken care of. Well, Jesus is going to take care of someone special today along with another friend. Okay, so we're going to just sit back and watch great Bible stories. Be sure to watch the next chapter of Great Bible Stories. Great Bible stories. Wow, they're always great, aren't they? And the story of the Good Samaritan, well, that's a good lesson for us that we should be helpful to other people. Well, right now, Blake, would you go out and see if the mailman's got here yet? You might have to look around the bushes. Sometimes he hides the mail on us a little bit. You go ahead and look for it. He likes to play games with us sometimes, you know. <laughs> but, uh, let's sometimes see it even comes airmail, Blake. I think Buffalo. Blake went clear down to go fishing. Oh, there you oh, are. There okay. He is. All right, good. thank you, Blake. Well, let's see who's going to get their. Oh, today we're going to give away a prize, aren't we? We're going to give away one of Black Buffalo's cassettes to each one whose name is chosen out of the mailbag. And where have you got one from, Singing Waters? I've got one from Kent, Washington. Kent, Washington. All right. Black Buffalo, for those boys and girls that don't know where Kent is, that's near Seattle, Washington. Right. Dear Black Buffalo, it's been nice seeing you for the past five days. I love you. I'm so glad Jesus healed my friend Ruthie from asthma. My best verse is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Love, Jessica Bossiker. P.S. Right back. <laughs> and she's from Kent, Washington. Right. And Jessica, you get one of Black Buffalo's story and song tapes, okay? Well, we're staying in the W states. That would be oh, what? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, okay. that's right. And this is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, from Chastity Saffel. And she says, Dear Buffalo, I like your show very much, and I can't wait to see the next show at 8.30. Please give blessings to me and my family, plus the poor and homeless people. Please show more Bible stories. <laughs> I hope you send me a surprise package. Sincerely, Ooh, Chastity from Milwaukee. She's going to get a surprise, <laughs> yes, all right. She gets she a gets, cassette. That's right. Well, if you got another one there, Singing Waters, we're going to give away three Black cassettes Buffalo. today. My name is Amanda. I would like to join your Pow Wow Club. I watch you on WINM Channel 63 in Angolo, Indiana. Angola. Angola, mm -hmm. Indiana. Okay. Right. And that's Amanda Elders from Defiance. Oh, Defiance, Ohio. Ohio then it must be kind of like a border, a border town. Okay. Yeah. Well, and Amanda, you get a, a cassette tape of Black Buffalo today, too. Good. Remember, you can write to Black Buffalo, and we'll send you all the free things. That's a picture of Black Buffalo, a bookmark. Hand me one of the bookmarks down there, Singing Waters and a secret smoke signal decoder and a membership card and all those things. And you get those free from Black Buffalo. We're glad to send them to you. And then if your letter is one of the ones that is chosen out of the mailbox to read out of the many that we get, 
why then you will receive besides all the other free things you also will receive one of black buffalo's cassettes of our stories and songs that are just like the tv program so write to us here's the address remember just write to me black buffalo post office box 2607 Hammock, California, 92546, and you'll get all the free things. Just say, friends, send me all the free stuff or whatever, and uh, Black Buffalo will send it to you. Black Buffalo, Post Office, Box 2607, Hemet, California, 92546, and I'll send you all of those free things, okay? I'll be looking for your letter. Be sure and write to me, all right? Well, I've got something here that I want to show to the boys and girls. I have uh, three ropes. Let's see, how about the second boy in there? Would you like to come up here for me for a minute? Let's see, Sing Water, give me that microphone. I gotta find out his name. And uh, we're gonna let you help me do something with these three ropes. They're all three different sizes, aren't okay, they? There's a little one, a medium-sized one, and uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, thank you, Singing Waters. And what's your name? Nick Niku. Eagle. Nick Eagle. Eagle, that's a good Indian name, huh? <laughs> but I've never seen an Eagle nicked yet. No, that's right. Nick, how old are you? Ten. Ten years old. Well, I'm glad you're on Black Buffalo's Pow Is this your first time for being on the Pow Wow? Yes. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun and enjoy it and have something to go home and talk about. Right now, I'm going to take these three ropes. Now, you can see, let's see, I've got three different sizes. Here's a little one, right? You want to hold that for a minute for me? And a medium-sized one, right? Mm -hmm. And an extra long one. Is that correct now? Okay, you hold those just for a moment. You see, one day there was a boy, he was a little Indian boy, and his, he watched his daddy, and his daddy was working with some ropes, and his daddy cut the ropes up and was using them for stuff. When he got through, there was some ropes like these laying on the ground, and the boy went over and said, Daddy, can I have those three ropes? And his daddy looked at him and said, Yeah, I guess they're too short for me to do anything with, so sure, you can have them. So he picked them up, and he kind of watered them all up like this here, you know, and he, and he stuck them in his pocket. And he went on, and he was playing and doing things, and and he forgot they was even in there. And the next morning, he wore the same shirt to school. He didn't even put on a clean shirt, but we won't tell anybody about that. He wore the same shirt to school. And when he got to school, it, what, it, see, the vacation, they just come off a of vacation, summer vacation, you know. You know what that is, don't you? Yes. You like summer vacation? Is that more fun than school? Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> we won't tell your teacher that, so, okay. Well, anyhow, he got, it was right after summer vacation over, and they'd come back to school, and he got his seat, but you know, he was assigned a seat where the girl that sat right in front of him had a great big bushy head of hair. I mean, it was a bushy head of hair. And he thought, me sitting behind her, I won't be able to see anything. Well, why didn't the teacher give me a better seat than this? And he thought about asking for a better seat when all of a sudden the teacher said, now boys and girls, I want you to think of the most exciting thing you did all summer. Because in a few minutes, I'm gonna ask you to come up here and tell us what you did. And he thought, oh, wow, I didn't do anything. He was from a very poor family, see, and they didn't have a vacation. He said, I didn't do anything all summer. If I tell him I didn't go any place and didn't do anything, I know the others all went places, but not me. And if I say I didn't do anything, they all think I'm nobody. Then he thought, hey, I know what I'll do. That girl with that big bushy head of hair in front of him, you know, he said, I'll just duck right down behind her and the teacher won't see me. So in a little while, the teacher said, all right, boys and girls, boop, he knew what she was going to do. So he got down there, and she said, let's see, who am I going to choose to come up and tell me? Who do you think she chose? It wasn't him, because he was hiding, and she didn't see him. Boy, it worked. Pretty soon, she called a boy on, and the boy came up, and he started telling about what he did for the summer, and this boy got so interested, he was looking around that bushy head of hair, you know, and he was looking around to see what was going on and what the boy had to say, and the boy talked about going to the farm and spending the time on the farm, and he thought, I've never been on a farm, and then he said, Grandpa even let me drive the tractor, and he thought, wow, how lucky can you get? And then he talked about milk and the cows, and he thought, ooh, I don't even know what that would be like. And all the things he did, and he got feeling so bad, he said, I didn't do nothing. And the teacher then, the boy got through talking, the teacher said, well, you sure had a good time, didn't you? And whoop, right down he went again, because he didn't want the teacher to see him, you know. And so he stayed right there, and the teacher was looking around, who will I choose next? Ah, the teacher knew who it was going to be. It was a girl. The girl came up, and she talked about going to Disney World. And he was leaning over and looking and listening this way and listening this way, because that girl with a bushy head of hair was going this way and this way. So he had to go this way and that way. Well, anyhow, pretty soon, pretty soon the girl was through, and the teacher started saying, oh, you had an exciting time, too. Whoop, there he went. And who do you think he cho the teacher chose this time? Who do you think it was? 
That's exactly it. How did you know? That's exactly what happened. The teacher chose a girl with a bushy hair, and she went up there, and he thought, what am I going to do? He was looking in that little space under the desk, you know, where you can put your books and papers. And he thought, if I could just crawl in there, but it's all full, and I can't get under the seat. The teacher will know. What will I do? And he thought, if I just sit here like a wooden Indian, and I won't move, everything will be okay. So he sat there. He didn't move an eyebrow. He didn't hardly breathe. And the girl got through, and the teacher was looking around and said, well, who will I choose next? Who do you think she chose this time? Who? That's right, she chose him. He came up, and he thought, walking up. He started walking kind of slow. His shoulders were drooping. His head was hanging down, and he was all sad, you know, looking down in the mouth. And he thought, what will I say? And then he knew, I know what I'll say. I know what I'll do. He got up there and said, you know what? I went on a television program on a game show, and I won first prize. And I got to go to Washington, D.C. on an all-expense-paid trip. And I went to the White House, and he told about going to the different rooms and all the things. All he knew was he'd watch TV all summer long, and that's what he had seen. And the teacher said, you're the luckiest boy of all, I think. And he said, yeah, I sure was. His shoulders were back. His head was up. He was sticking his chest out, you know. And he said, yeah, I sure was, man. That was me. Well. They went out in class, after class, they went out for, for recess, and they were sitting there, and a girl came up to him and said, you're a liar, you told a lie. He said, no, I didn't, what do you mean I told a lie? She said, I was here all summer, and I tried to get you to play with me, and you wouldn't even come out and play because you didn't want to play with girls, and you just stayed inside. All, you didn't go any place, you told a lie. He said, no, I just told a little fib. She said, a fib is a lie, and a lie is a lie. He said, no, I just told like a little white lion. He was kind of fiddling with these ropes, you know, because he didn't want to look at her. She said, a white lie is a lie, and a fib is a lie, and you told a lie. He said, no, look, look. See this little rope? She said, yeah. And he said, that's sort of like me. I just told a little story. It didn't hurt anybody. And everybody know Bobby. He tells great big stories. And Stevie, he tells whoppers, and I'm not as bad as those guys. And she said, a lie is still a lie, and you told a lie. He says, no. She said, put all those ends together. And he did. And she said, can you tell them apart? Can you tell them apart? No. She said, uh, but he said, I still know I told the little one. She said, okay, put all the ends together. So he reached it over his hand like that, and he took the little one, and he brought it over, and he took the medium one, and he brought it over, and he took the long one, and he brought it over. And she said, now can you tell them apart? And he said, no, but I still know that I told the little one, and Bobby tells the big ones, and Stevie tells the whoppers, and I'm not as bad as them. She said, give me those ropes. He handed them to her, and just like that, the ropes all turned out one size. There wasn't a little one anymore. There wasn't a medium-sized one anymore. There wasn't a long one anymore. They were all exactly the same size. She said, see, a lie is a lie, whether it's a little one or a big one or a whopper. A lie is still a lie. He looked there, and he said, how'd you do that? She said, that ain't what's important. What's important is you told a lie. He said, let me see that. And quickly, he looked at it. And he took the one rope out. There you are. Can you hold that up for him? And can you hold this up for them? And then how about this one here? Can you hold this up for him? And let's take a look at it. He said, how'd you do that? He said, I know one thing. I'm never going to tell a lie anymore, whether it's a little one or a whopper. I'm not going to tell him because I want all God has for me. And I'm not going to tell a lie because I know that's wrong. Let's give my helper a hand for helping me, OK? Thank you very, very much. Well, I'll tell you what, Black Buffalo has been happy, and we've had a good time today, an exciting time. We're down in the last few seconds of our program, and I'm going to have to say goodbye right now to you boys and girls there at home. Be sure and tell your friends to watch Black Buffalo's Pow Wow. I'll tell you what, you have a lot of things, just like March from Wildlife Prey and all the others coming right on Black Buffalo's Pow Wow. Great Bible stories. Tell your friends to watch us next time right here on this channel. Until then, we'll be seeing you. Goodbye now.